Вітаємо! Це традиційний брифінг штабу інформаційної оборони. У Маріуполь в червоному... Greetings! This is the traditional briefing of the Information Defense Staff. So, humanitarian assistance once again didn't make it to Mariupol from Zaporizhia. The city is still under siege. For now, a couple of hundreds of people require help. The occupiers demolished the building of the state emergency services of Ukraine. Bombarding has been registered in the vicinity of Drama Theater. What concerns the information on human toll, it is still being clarified. Despite all of this, 24 babies have been born in the city. Life will conquer death under any circumstances. Today's negotiations, as expected, didn't bear any fruit. The representative of the aggressor country, Sergei Lavrov, claimed that Russia does not intend to attack any other countries and that Russia, in his words, didn't attack Ukraine either. So, while Russia keeps living in a parallel reality, there's nothing to agree upon with it. Apart from this, the occupiers have been trying to blackmail us. The operator of the natural gas transmission system of Ukraine has informed about the attempts of Russian military and militant groups of so-called Luhansk Republic to access the territory of compressor uh, plants in Novopskov in Luhansk region and in Kupiansk in Kharkiv region and also to interfere with the operations of the gas transportation system units. Two Russian rockets fell on the territory of an airport in the village of Luzovatka of the Kravei region. Nobody was hurt. In the Zhitomyr region, in the village of Starakotelnya, at the checkpoint, five military men were shot to death, two were wounded. Since the beginning of Russian invasion in Ukraine, 71 children have died. More than 100 children have been hurt. In Irpin, in the Kyiv region, a 10-year-old girl received a fragment-penetrating injury and is now in the hospital in serious condition. 44 evacuation buses left from Izum in the Kharkiv region. They carry around 2,000 people. Apart from this, Humanitarian assistance was sent to the town, which is under such vicious fire from the occupiers. A green corridor worked today between Enerhodar and Zaporizhia. Owing to the efforts by 206 Battalion of Territorial Defense and Ministry of Internal Affairs, the evacuation goes on from Bucha, Vorzel, Hostomel, and in Irpeng. Today, a couple of thousand people were again sent to safer places. In Mokolaiv at the same time, a suggestion was made to create a corridor for the Russian soldiers that don't want to fight but are afraid to go back to Russia. Nonetheless, there will be no mercy on the, those that already have killed Ukrainians, on artillery men and on missile men. We keep reporting on the work that we do. Volunteers from the Lviv region have transferred baby food, food products and basic needs supplies to Brovary and to other towns in the Kyiv region. In Kirovohrad region, Ahrovista Holding has ship the first batch of medical supplies to Alexandria. In Donetsk region, our volunteers have delivered products for the territorial defense. The Donetsk region is standing strong. Volunteers in Odessa have transferred more than 600 sets of thermal underwear for the defenders of Ukraine. It's cold outside, there's frost, the guys come to see us and say that it's quite complicated to do without thermal underwear.
And on to the good news. Russian forces were stopped from all the directions. For now, the enemy is making an attempt to hold the positions they occupied earlier. In some positions, they are entrenching themselves. This is happening in Kherson. In Chernihiv region, the armed forces of Ukraine destroyed the battalion of ballistic missile weapon systems, Iskander M, that fired at civilians. Uh, the armed forces of Ukraine uh, informed that Ukrainian army has taken out um, in the Kyiv region the Russian commander of tank regiment Andriy Zaharov just outside Bravare. In 2016, Zaharov received a military award from the president of Russia Vladimir Putin. People keep staging protests against the Russian occupation in Kherson. People gathered in the Freedom Square in front of armed Russian military. Yet again, people took to the streets in Melitopol, Berdyansk, and Primorsk in the Zaporizhia region. The president has signed an order which allows to nationalize the property of Russian Federation and its citizens on the territory of Ukraine without reimbursement of the costs. All of this will be channeled towards the revival of Ukrainian infrastructure and uh, accommodations for all the Ukrainians that lost place of residence, but also to reinforce the Ukrainian army. Global companies keep pulling out of the Russian market and the ones that remain won't be able to operate fairly soon without necessary components and the raw materials. Even in China, they announced that they won't help Russia with spare parts for the planes. So unemployment and hunger strikes is just a small price to pay for Russian aggression, even though it's not enough. But it's a good sign, because in reality, Russian ep economy is falling apart at the seams, and they will pay through the nose for their aggression. We're experiencing a complicated situation now. The aggressor has less and less strength. It's difficult for them to make advances, but they want to consolidate on the positions that they have occupied. Having occupied a big number of Ukrainian towns, and the towns that they failed to enter, unfortunately are heavily damaged. So now we are at a transitional stage and we believe that we will win because we are strong, because we love our country and we won't let anybody have it. Glory be to Ukraine. Thank you. Slava Ukraine.